morning. Good morning. And welcome as we gather for worship and praise today. As we continue our Lenten series, Be Gracious to Me, uh, we're going to focus on, and we've been focusing on uh, the specific Psalm 41, and we're going to focus on verse 4 today. To begin our worship, we'll rise and greet one another. Jesus. Amen. 
Almighty God, in his mercy, sent Jesus into our world, not only to disrupt our sinfulness, but also to forgive us by his death and resurrection. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven because of Christ crucified. In our response to Psalm this morning is our verse that we're going to focus on today, verse 4 of Psalm 41. May God be gracious to us and bless us. And make his face to shine upon us. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. We pray. O Lord our God, we ask you with our whole heart to forgive our sins and wipe out our errors, direct our actions, and by the indwelling of your Spirit, purify our consciences and sanctify our hearts, so that, forgiven and renewed, we may serve you and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading from 2 Samuel 12. The Lord afflicted the child that Uriah's wife bore to David when he became sick. David therefore sought God on behalf of the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. And the elders of his house stood beside him to raise him from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. On the seventh day, the child died. And the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he did not listen to us. How then can we say to him, the child is dead? He may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, David understood that the child was dead. And David said to his servants, is the child dead? They said, he is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. He then went to his own house. And when he asked, they set food before him, and he ate. Then, the, then his servant said to him, What is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. He said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who knows whether the Lord will be gracious to me, that the child may live. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Our epistle reading is from 1 Peter 2. This is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure. But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. <coughs> By his wounds, you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is from John chapter 1. 
The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know it, but for this purpose I came, baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. These are the words of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. We profess our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time we'll have our children talk. <coughs>
Yeah. Yeah, it is hard to say we're sorry because that means that we realize we've done wrong, right? Um, it might be harder to say nowadays too because perhaps different things in society and culture um, tell us some things aren't so wrong anymore that they used to be. So maybe we have a hard time saying sorry because the culture and the people around us don't think that things are wrong anymore, right? Um, our sinful hearts don't like to admit that we've done something wrong. And in our Bible study verse today, the psalm writer says, I have sinned. It's a very important thing to say. When we sin, we're separated from God. Um, actually, that's kind of the truest definition for what hell is, is being separated from God. Um, but Jesus died for our sins. And because of that, we can confess our sins, that we have sinned and are sorry. And then the Father forgives us because of Jesus. Let's try another hard word. Have you come across this one in your confirmation studies? I may not even say it right, propitiation. I like this word. Do you know what it means? Ah. This should definitely become your new favorite word because it is the word that means that our sins are paid for. You see, um, he took our sins. Jesus took our place, and that's what this word means, in our stead, in our place. And he died for our sins so that all of our sins are paid for. Now, this word, I'm sure you've heard of, and that you are all under this. Yes, let's say that nice and loud. Right. And I'm sure you've talked about that in your confirmation studies, if you haven't or you will. Um, our baptism connects us to Jesus. Because Jesus paid for our sins, all our sins are washed away. And that leads us to our last word. Say this one out loud. Forgiveness. Right. God, the Father, loves us and gives us forgiveness every time we tell him that we're sorry for our sins. So let's bow our heads, hold our hands, and I will say the prayer for you. Dear Jesus, thank you for taking our place and paying for your sins, for our sins that you took on yourself. Thank you for the forgiveness we receive because we are connected to you in baptism. And in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.
work in our hearts and minds, for we have sinned and need your healing. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in the midst of a series where we're focused on a single psalm, Psalm 41. And as we look at this psalm, multiple things are going on. First, we recognize that the writer David is lifting up his personal circumstances and struggles. But second, we are seeing how the same lament or circumstance fits into Jesus' life, especially as he journeys to the cross. And lastly, we, we're looking at how this psalm applies to, to our daily lives and our struggles. So today, we hear David say from verse 4, As for me, I said, O oh Lord, be gracious to me, heal me, for I have sinned against you. And we know David's record of sin according to Scripture. As King David, as he saw the wife of another man's son bathing, he lusted after her with his eyes. When he was told that she was already taken, his mind had lusted anyway so hard that all he could envision is sleeping with her. When pregnancy resulted from this encounter, David had to cover it up somehow. First, he tried to trick the husband, and when that didn't work, he had her husband killed. And in the process, David cost the needless lives of other soldiers as he had Uriah set up to be killed. David had, had made a mess of things as he tried his best to deceive his troops and his subjects in the whole cover-up just to save face, just to appear beloved and worthy of commitment and sacrifice for him. And in addition, David wrecked his relationship with the Lord. He ended up despising the word of the Lord, ignoring it, turning away from all that the Lord had given and had in store for this king. <coughs> He had put in place to lead and to protect his people, but David was walking away from it all. Now David's life was filled with struggle, with running away, with fear of doubt at the hands of others, and the death of his own son with Bathsheba. David was a mess. Is it any wonder that he would spend his days lamenting? We hear in multiple places in the Psalms, O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor despise me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. My soul is also greatly troubled. But you, O Lord, how long? David, he said elsewhere in Psalm 32, for, I, for when I kept silent, he said, my bones wasted away through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of the sun. And in Psalm 38, he went even more. He said, O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. For your arrows have sunk deep into me, and your hand has come down on me. There's no soundness in my flesh, he said, because of your indignation. There's no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. He said, all the day I go about mourning. For my sides are filled with burning. There's no soundness in my flesh. He said, I am feeble and crushed. And I groan because of the tumult of my heart. David's hurting and lament was clear. And it weighed on his body and mind. Torturing him as he replays it in his mind again and again. And when David said, I have sinned against you. He's fully owning up to his failures. He's seeking relief. He wants healing for his soul. He wants restoration with his God. You know, David's, I have sinned against you. It is clear. 
But what about Jesus? How could I have sinned against you? How could that apply to Jesus? After all, John and Peter and Isaiah have said, in him there is no sin. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. He's done no violence. There's no deceit in his mouth, they said. Now just because Jesus committed no sin, does that mean he had no sin? Yes, the, the writer of Hebrews says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one in, who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. But what that means is that yet without sin of his own. You see, when John writes, in him there is no sin, it doesn't mean that there was no sin on him. You see, John the Baptist was faithful and true when he said concerning Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away. In other words, who, who picks up, who, who puts on his shoulders, who, who carries off the sins of the world. And that includes yours, that includes mine. You see, the, Je the sins that Jesus bore, they were his own. Though he did claim it as his own. The sins that Jesus bore, Isaiah is clear. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Martin Luther, in a, in a lecture on Galatians, he said, When the merciful Father saw that we were being oppressed through the law, that we were being held under a curse, and that we could not be liberated from it by anything, he sent his son into the world. He heaped all the sins of men upon him. And he said to Jesus, Be Peter the denier, Paul the persecutor, blasphemer and assaulter, David the adulterer, the sinner who ate the apple in paradise, the thief on the cross. In short, be the person of all men, the one who has committed the sins of all men. And see to it that you pay and make satisfaction for them. And you see, that's where you and I come in. God the Father laid on his perfect son every corrupt thing about us. You heard me say last week that Jesus held himself personally responsible for our guilt. He made himself to be the guilty one so that he could be, so that you and I, we would be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish. And that's who you and I are. You and I, though, we know that we have our blemishes, don't we? We can cry along with David that there is no soundness in my flesh, no health in my bones because of my sin. We know the heavy burden of our sins that feel so heavy for us. Our wounds that are, are filled with sins that stink and fester because of our foolishness. God, word, and deed, you and I, we are the deniers, the persecutors, the blasphemers, the assaulters, the adulterers, and the liars, and the cheats, and the thieves, and the bearers of false witness, and the placer of things before God. We are guilty of being the dishonorer and lazy, and the despiser of the word, and the begrudger of giving of things like time, and talents, and treasures to him, or to share them with one another. And you know, our list can go on and on of our sins and failures, and that's why our cry is easily David's cry and his prayer. O oh Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. And you know, in our confession, in our lament and our sorrow, flowing from the truth, the wondrous good news is that our prayer has already been heard before we even uttered it. Our Lenten journey to the cross is revealing yet again 
that the Lord is gracious to us. Just as the Lord heard David's prayer and laid all of David's sin on his son, this Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The same is true for each one of us. As the Lord did for David, so he has done for you and for me. The Lord has heard our prayer and listened to our plea for grace and mercy. The Heavenly Father has laid all of our sins on his Son right at the foot of the cross at Calvary so that Jesus' blood shed there could cover each and every one of them. And in his death, the Father has accepted Jesus' life given as full payment for them. And in resurrection, Jesus has promised that our relationship with the Father is as our Father. And it is restored. And our title as His beloved children is also restored as well. And righteousness and holiness, that is how our Lord sees us, thanks to forgiveness. And now we have an inheritance of life with Him now and life eternal in the heavenly paradise that's set aside, that's waiting for occupancy by each one of us one day. But until that day, we are daily, we are continually we are richly being blessed. We're being blessed with His gracious care. Our souls, through word and sacrament, as the Holy Spirit works, is richly and generously being worked in our lives. Our souls are being healed. Our souls are being renewed. Our sins are being forgiven as He drives us to repentance. And our struggle in this life, it's not ours alone, thanks to Jesus. Our Lord lightens them as He bears us up. As He sees us through the moments and the next one and the next struggle and difficulty and comes. And He provides forgiveness and strength and grace. You see, this was David's prayer. And this is our prayer. This is our life in Christ. And that's why we pray, be gracious to us, Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds clinging to Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, our offering will be brought forward. <laughs>
Holy Spirit, we lift up all who have been given positions of authority and public trust. Give them wisdom and discernment to fulfill their office to the best of their abilities. May they serve honorably and for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, great physician of body and soul, we lift to you those who are hospitalized, recovering from surgery, facing chronic pain or long-term health problems, and all who, who, all who are suffering and dying as a result of living in a fallen world. Lord, we especially remember Sheila and Scott and Bob and Les and Lynn. We also lift up Brian as he faces illness. We lift up the family and friends of Evelyn and Jean asking for your comfort and peace as only you can give in times of sorrow. Lord, we lift up all in our hearts. Give comfort, mercy, perseverance, and patience, as well as healing according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we rejoice with those celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversaries this week. We thank you for the blessings of the past and entrust them to your future care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those struggling with relationship issues, whether in friendships, family dynamics, marital struggles, or relationships within the church. We pray that you would bring repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation in the midst of such struggle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen.
Uh, note that uh, myself and my family uh, will be going on holidays on Saturday. So we'll be here all week, but then we leave Saturday morning uh, for a week. While on the way, Pastor Will from Seabox Hill is on call. So if anything comes up, get a hold of Ken Rader and he'll get a hold of uh, Pastor Will uh, to take care of those things. We'll be back the following week uh, for the Sunday service. That means that next, um, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday service and this coming Sunday, not, not now, next Sunday, uh, Pat, the elders will be leading those, leading those services as well. So make sure you come to support that as it means. What else needs to be made mention of? Elizabeth? Uh, tomorrow night, uh, Women's Fellowship is going to the Thai restaurant in Exeter. There's a sign up sheet on the bulletin board if you would like to join us. We'll be Meeting there at 6.30, please sign up because we'll call and make a reservation. Um, prayer group is meeting Tuesday night at 7.30 here at the church. So if you would like to come and join us for prayer, we'd love to have you. Uh, Triple T will meet this coming Saturday from 9 to 11.30. And for the next two Sundays, uh, there will not be Sunday school. So no Sunday school on the 10th or the 17th, but we will be back uh, to study school on Palm Sunday, on the 24th, I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Anything else need to be made mention? Of course. I would love to meet with the confirmants that are here and their families quickly. Um, the, uh, the times and dates for the bowl for uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, so hopefully we can decide which time slot we want to book, if possible. Um, Thank you for those that have given donations so far um, to sponsor our confirmants. If there is other youth in the congregation or, or people that would be wanting to grab sponsor sheets and also participate in Team Zion, please come see me. Okay. Anything else? Uh, um, the Easter sunrise breakfast, um, there is a sign up sheet also on the bulletin board, so if you're planning on coming for breakfast, Please sign that and how many people from your family will be there so that the uh, confirmation families have enough food for breakfast. And um, today's fellowship time, so we invite everybody to stick around for fellowship time. And I have one more announcement, but I'm going to wish well to all those on the internet. And Peter's going to turn her off there because this one's just for us here. 